grand existence. And so the question becomes, now that we know emphatically, empirically, that scientific evidence tells us that aqueous water extracts have more therapeutic activity than ethanol extracts, why is this so? This is because, like I've been saying, certain compounds only present within the cell wall have the capacity to be dissolved by water, right? And so when we use the ethanol first, when we use the ethanol first, when we use the ethanol first, right? It denatures the lipids, the polysaccharides, the membrane bound uh, proteins and other complexes that carry intense immunomodulating and regulatory effects. And so the question becomes, what kind of water, right? God, keep constantly redrawing these things which is fabulous. The, the question now stands. What kind of water and what kind of alcohol? So it was shown in vivo, in vitro, the aqueous extracts carry more of these water-soluble compounds than commercially sold hydroethanolic extracts. And so, so why are people there? The, the problem is that there's just no research really on various, on the comparison of extraction methods between different herbal substrates. So that's really what I'm getting at here. So now that we know that we, we should do the water first, if we want to extract most of the compounds out of it, the question is what kind of water? Cause the thing about water aqueous solutions is that what we call water is actually like at the very least nine different things in one okay there's such thing as the auto ionization of water where h2o auto ionizes at its pka to form oh negative and H plus. And so the question is at what percent hydrogen? pH also means the power of hydrogen. So the question becomes at what pH? Mm, man, I do have handwriting like a five year old, but that does not negate the knowledge. All right. So the pH is incredibly important. Basically, I've said before, most of the compounds in existence are combined combinations of carbon and hydrogen in unique forms, and most of it is hydrogen. And so what we find is that the percent hydrogen in molecular systems, in medicines, can become incredibly important because obviously you could have a very acidic water. It's actually not obvious. People are not really aware of this. So. I'm here to tell you that water is, can fall anywhere along the spectrum of, per, of the pH. So we can have a very acidic water with a very low pH, like literally from 0.1 to, you know, the, the middle of the pH scale, neutrality is 7, okay? So without going too deeply into the uh, chemistry of water, even though I do promise a water masterclass is coming very soon, you should just know that essentially water has the capacity to extract polar and nonpolar compounds if it is correctly pHed, okay? It needs to be pHed at the neutral point, seven, directly in the middle. This allows a sort of buffer region for the water to take in all these molecules, which kind of hover around a water soluble, a, uh, a neutral polarity, right? 
and how much water. So the question is what kind of water? The answer is distilled water. You want distilled water, not kept in bottles or plastic. You don't want to get, you know, all bottled water is absolutely a scam. Collect your own water. Nature is constantly distilling. You don't necessarily want to take it from the air though because it's not a perfect distillation. I highly recommend a countertop tabletop distiller or if you have a distillation apparatus, that works really well too, obviously. So you want to get a water at a 7.0 pH, perfectly pure. You don't want contaminants in it. You don't want sink water because that stuff is filled with garbage. And then how much? So then you begin your decoction. And so you take really as much you can put let's say you have an ounce of mushrooms i would start with no less than five ounces of water and it really doesn't matter how much you just need a pot big enough to hold it all because at the end of the day we're going to simmer it all down and concentrate it perfectly according to our ratios of alcohol as well so it's not entirely significant because once you begin the decoction and you apply heat then the extraction will be will will begin and the the uh constituents will be removed from this from the uh, mark that begins your water extraction so one to five ounce ratio is generally what i follow to begin with and then what happens though is now that you have acquired the important bits the non the non alcohol soluble once you've acquired all the non alcohol soluble contents from the outside of the cell from the membrane now we move into the alcohol portion which will destroy the membrane okay it'll get rid of the membrane and it will make everything that is that was inside of the cell now available to be used to be extracted into the tincture okay so you don't really need to see what i'm drawing but it really helps me to learn and understand what's going on so the alcohol soluble contents will be released once the cell membrane is denatured and once all of the other medicinal agents are cleaved off of the membrane we don't have to worry about them anymore because they're trapped with the water solution. So now that we have the, uh, the water solution separate decocting, you want to have that going. Really, you could do a cold water decoction and leave it in for, um, I would say, no less than two weeks. Okay, You can leave it up as long as eight weeks, um, probably further than that. Uh, some people do three months. It's kind of a, an intensely personal decision depending on what you're using the mushroom for. If you are truly a, uh, a patient and you need the medicine, then personally I'd recommend you come to me so I can extract it for you. But you would want to uh, do a more thorough extraction yourself. If you're just doing it for nutritional purposes and to have some sort of supplements on your daily life, then you don't need to go that long, really. You could probably say for two weeks and then move into a cold water decoction for two weeks and then move into your alcohol decoction, maceration, excuse me. Or you could heat up the water. Um, you don't want it to boil. You want the water to just have a uh, constant steam coming off of it because, again, this heat, it can destroy... It can destroy those membrane-bound water-soluble compounds. And so you don't want to apply too much heat, just the right amount. Um, oh. Sometimes you just need to collect your thoughts and Ohm's work. Oh. So when you move on to the ethanol portion, 
You macerate, cold water maceration, maceration is absolutely fine. No less than two weeks again. You can go up to eight weeks. Some mushrooms like chaga, turkey tail, lion's mane have shown to decrease antioxidant activity after eight months of maceration. So I wouldn't recommend going more than eight months. And frankly, I truly think that anything longer than probably three months might be a bit of an overkill. But it's, like I said, an intensely personal decision. And now that you, now that we've created the, the water extract and we've created the, the ethanol extract, now if you're looking to make a holistic medicine, that's what we do here at the Pharmacopoeia, you want to combine these two together, okay? And so this kind of becomes tricky because um, when you combine the water and the alcohol together, you can very often lose um, some compounds out of the solution due to the solubility, uh, the difference in solubility between these two, uh, between the compounds and these two different types of solvents. And so what I recommend, now everybody kind of generally says 20 to 25% alcohol ratio is your final concentration, which is good. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, to reach your final concentration, 25%. Um, what you'll notice in a lot of these 25% alcohol extracts is that as they sit over time, precipitate or salt or solid particles begin to appear in the solution and then fall down to the bottom of the flask, sort of like yeast and like right here. Just to give you an idea of what it looks like, this is not the same thing. This is a bottle of fennel wine. This down here is a bunch of yeast that, uh, that has settled down. And so the same kind of appearance will appear in your mushroom extract. The same kind of salts will fall out of solution and appear in the bottom. And that means that it's not homogenous. It's not holistic. It's not one form. And the thing that a solution is, is when everything is in solution, then you know that you have a balanced medicine. You know that you have got something that is going to be more bioavailable than these precipitates. And so what I recommend doing is slowly but surely adding your alcohol proportion into the water portion until you begin to see um, basically a difference in the, what is the word I'm looking for? You will begin to see these precipitates form immediately as soon as they reach the point of which they fall out of solution. When the pH changes of the extract of the final solution, then that's when you begin to get these precipitates that fall out. And um, it's, it's, like I said, there's no research, so it's difficult to tell exactly for every single mushroom because some mushrooms don't or have loads of beta-glucans and triterpenes. Some of them don't. And so every single one is going to be different on the ratio that you want to finally combine back together. Now, everybody says, everybody says, and I haven't been able to find any research on this, but you don't want to go lower, higher than 25 or 30% alcohol. And so what I recommend doing is just combining very small amounts of alcohol into the water solution and looking at the solution to make sure that there is no precipitate, there is no precipitate that is forming because you will be able to see it once you reach a certain concentration of alcohol to water, things will begin to basically snow and fall out of the liquid. The solids will form, okay? So that's an important thing to know and really understand because quality medicine, holistic medicine is our goal. Retaining the complete profile of metabolites of these plants, primary and secondary, is our goal, okay? So the more you lose, the less quality your medicine truly is. And 
ultimately that can be a very confusing process. Now, if you know the exact alcoholic ratio that you want your final medicine to be, which not everybody does, but I'm telling you right now, you're going to have to do a little research on your own to figure out what that ratio is. Um, or you can like stay tuned for my book that's coming in some undeterminable amount in the future, and I'll break all this stuff down in, in writing. So it's not less as repetitive and made up on the spot, but, but once you get the, the ratio, once you understand what ratio you want, there is an equation you can use to determine the final percentage of your alcohol. And this was something, another thing in my learning that was a crucial key to creating these spagyric elixirs and mushroom medicines and making alcohol in general. It's really important to know this equation, which isn't easy to find on the internet if you don't know what you're talking about. So, oh, I dropped my marker. Here's my advice. If you have two solutions, one water and one alcohol, and you know, let's say your first solution is alcohol and it's say 95%. And you've got say 100 milliliters of it. The, uh, and then you want the final concentration to be Let's say you want it to be 20% because you did your research and you know. So this is how you would set the equation up. And forget who invented this. I'm sorry, dude. Whoever you are. C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2. Okay. C1 is your concentration. Everything is backwards. I apologize. C1 is your concentration of your first uh, solvent or your first extract. V1 is the quantity in the quantity in milliliters, okay, is equal to the concentration of your second solvent, your second extract. So let's just label this like extract one and extract two. And your X here is your final volume, okay? So you know the concentration you want, you know the concentration you have, you know the volume you have, you don't know the volume of water that you're going to need to add. Extract one is alcohol, extract two is water. So what, this is a very simple algebraic equation. You multiply these two together, this becomes like 95 equal to... 0.2 times x, and I'm just working this out for you. You would divide the whole thing by 0.2 is 475. That's what x equals. x equals 475, and that is your milliliters, okay? And so once you have your final concentration, right? Remember, initial concentration, initial volume, Final concentration, unknown volume. You solve for X, you get the final unknown volume, and then you, ex you subtract the final volume from your initial volume, 100 milliliters minus 100. That's 375, right? That's, okay, so now you know that you need to add 375 milliliters of water to 100 milliliters of 95% alcohol in order to get 20% alcohol water ratio, a hydroethanolic extract. In other words, alcohol by volume equals 20%. So I hope that wasn't too messy and you can read my handwriting and I wasn't too repetitive and you were able to receive any sort of good use from this exposition on my understanding of the mushroom medicine. And thank you very much for joining me here in the pharmacopoeia again.
My name is Nicholas Jensen Denton, and have a grand existence.